let's look at uh, the seven bullet points on freelance web design. It's a kind of a quick guide how to, what you need to do to get your freelance web design career going. Seven bullet points. So let's start with number one, you need skills. Now, freelance web design, I'm not talking about web developer, front-end develop, web developer, or necessarily full stack. It's more of a small business-oriented professional freelance web designer. It's a different thing than being a full stack developer working for a large company. You need a different set of skills. They cross over, but a different set of skills. So let's talk about the skills. A, you need your HTML5, your CSS3. Now, when I say you need to know your HTML5 and CSS3, that means more than just the code. You need to understand the infrastructure around the languages. That means you understand server request response model, you understand different types of hosting and domain names, you understand about basic design characteristics, basic layout rules so that layouts look good. You need to understand the infrastructure out there that you can have access to in terms of providing your skills for a pr prospective client. Some client sites you may need to build from scratch. Some others might be better if you use a CMS like a WordPress or Joomla or Drupal. Or maybe they're super simple and you d they just need you to set up their domain name, set up their social presence, throw up their site on Wix and, and manage that for them. That happens too. It really depends on um, the particular job at hand, but you need to be aware of all these things. But the foundation of all this is basic knowledge of your good knowledge rather of HTML5, CSS3, a smidgen of JavaScript so that you, you can do basic things uh, with JavaScript. You don't necessarily need to be a JavaScript programmer. Again, this is for web design. This is a general purpose, jack of all trades type of service provider for freelancers. This is very different from a uh, front end developer who might be using vanilla JavaScript with, uh, with uh, maybe React or maybe with Vue.js or maybe with Angular, depending on the type of job or where you work. It's a different beast, right? I don't see uh, many freelancers for small businesses, for small business websites, necessarily jumping into React, especially React or Angular. Might do some Vue, it's hard to say. And you don't need to be a master JavaScript programmer when you're doing general freelance work in the web space. Now, if you really wanted to supercharge the amount of money you can make, be good to learn at least a little bit about server side full stack programming. Again, you don't have to be a super expert, but just know your way around what the options are. So the top three options in the freelance space, in my opinion, are PHP, number one, just because so many businesses use it. Number two, it would be, uh, well, number two and number three, it's, it's a close tie. It would either be JavaScript with Node and some framework for server-side programming, or maybe Python, Django. For freelance development for small businesses, you're not going to be using .NET, you're not going to be using Java, you're not going to be using Perl. Um, Java and .NET are typically reserved for large organizations, not a freelancer's technology, these technologies. I'm not putting them down, it's just not good for that space. Sometimes you need a sports car, sometimes you need a pickup truck, right? That's an overview. Okay, I'll throw in Bootstrap. Bootstrap is a good framework to know. Again, you don't have to know everything about Bootstrap. Just like you don't have to know everything about HTML5 and everything about CSS3. You see, a professional knows the key components of a language is or a library and knows what's important and knows how to implement that. And you have a good fundamental knowledge of everything that's out there so that you can pick and choose what technology is best suited for the, very, for the job at hand. That's the main principle. So those are the skills that the freelance web designer, web professional needs to have. HTML5, CS3, understand the CMSs. Doesn't mean be a work, an expert at them, just understand which are, what are the options and when the job comes up, learn the WordPress or learn the Drupal. You're probably gonna be using WordPress if that comes up. A touch of JS and maybe if you wanna really supercharge how much you're gonna earn, learn some server-side programming. Again, not so you're gonna build the next Facebook, but yeah, you can implement some shopping carts and stuff like that. So PHP is my number one choice and then 
uh, second or third would be uh, Node.js, JavaScript, or Python Django, or Python Flask, depending on the job. All right, number two. Um, once you got your skills, you got to put up a good site to showcase your work. My number one tip about putting up a good site, make sure it looks good. Because even if you're selling yourself as a, a guy stitches everything together, it still has to look good because non-programmers, your clients, have no way of judging how good your skills are except by how nice your site looks. So make sure it looks good. And if you don't have good design skills, then use a template. There's many out there. Make some minor modifications, your images and stuff like that. So it's, it's, uh, you know, so it's your stuff. But there's nothing wrong with using front-end web design templates. It's equivalent to JavaScript programmers using other people's libraries to implement something, or a PHP programmer using, programmer using PHP libraries to implement something, etc. So nothing wrong with that. And in fact, using templates in your professional workflow is, uh, for small business development is par for the course, in fact. You should, in most cases. Because design from scratch is very expensive. I know we're redoing the Studio Web for branding and a new Studio Web for store, and we're designing from scratch. But that's because that's what we that's what we do, right? And it's a very involved project, and the budget just for the design would be way beyond what most businesses would spend. Small businesses on their site. Anyhow, next step three. Now that you get your site up, you get your skills. You want to reach out to local business, could be friends, families, whatever. You want to just get some practice jobs, small jobs. Don't want to do two month jobs at last months, but small jobs. And the reason you want to do this is A, to gain reputation and B, to, um, to learn to work with other people. Learn to work with other people. That's very important. So yeah, you want to get a couple of jobs under your belt. Probably going to be free. If you're lucky, you might get jobs where you get paid like a substandard rate. Again, it's Consider it a stash as part of the learning process. One thing I want to point out going forward is that reputation is huge. Reputation is huge. Don't discount that. The two most valuable assets you have going forward in life these days, in my opinion, not houses, not stocks, it's reputation and your skill sets. Reputation and your skill sets. So you want to cultivate your reputation. The first way you cultivate your reputation is getting a website that looks good. The next step is to develop relationships with local businesses if possible. If you can't do local businesses, the next step, number four, is to try online markets like Upwork. If you don't know what these are, there's several out there. There's Upwork, I don't know, Fiverr or something. Find this one that's suitable for you. And you, again, do some free work, again, to develop reputation there. Make sure you deliver on time, you have good communications, they like you, they give you five stars. Again, that's going to help just like an Amazon uh, f review of your book. Like I have a book on Amazon. It has five-star reviews. It helps. People look at these things, right? Part of reputation. Next step, you do want to get one, some sort of social presence. Again, create a, a, a digital trail of who you are. So you might post up information. Don't, don't post up embarrassing things, but post things like... Um, that relate to what you're trying to sell in terms of your freelance skills. Talk about some new libraries you're exploring or some recent job you've done or some, you know, your exploration to WordPress, whatever. You want to have a, a paper trail, a digital trail rather, of um, what it is you do so people can see this. They can see that you're actively, your mind is in that space. You're a professional. You're a professional web designer, web professional. Number uh, six. Well, before I go on, in terms of um, developing your reputation, your social, your website, another thing that might help out, uh, will help, it will help out is initially anyway to kickstart your career. A couple certifications here and there doesn't hurt. Just to show that you've actually, you know, you've done the work. It, it's not, you know, it's not as important as having a website and having some reputation and working with people, but it it, it could help. Okay, number six, you want to, um, this is more of a suggestion, you could specialize in a business sector. So for instance, maybe you find yourself, you're the go-to person who builds websites for coffee shops, or you build websites for restaurants, or maybe you build websites for uh, electricians and plumbers. Or maybe for real estate agents, you see that a lot. 
So why would you want to do this? A, you're building reputation within that community. And B, um, there's going to be a consistency in all the real estate, real estate sites. There'll be a consistency in all the coffee shop sites. This consistency will allow you to put out optimized sites in a much quicker manner and a much more professional manner. And that brings me to my final point. This will allow you to develop workflows to reduce time and increase your money and productivity. So that is the key, my friends. That is the key. Uh, you want to, over time, refine your skills, refine your reputation, and refine your workflows so that you can maximize your profitability. So in my own experience as a freelancer, I went from earning X to 5X over a few years period just because I took the steps to improve all these things that I just talked about. All right, I hope that helps. I'm off to the gym. Very important that you make working out and training as important as any other aspect of your day. Without a healthy body, you cannot have a healthy mind. So work out on a regular basis. Don't kill yourself working out. Minor working out. You know, just break a sweat, lifts heavy things. That will make you feel much better and your cognitive capabilities will increase accordingly as well. So that's it. I'm off to the gym. I suggest you do a little training. If you don't have a gym, do a few push-ups in the house. Maybe if you can, do some handstands, uh, jog in place, skip some rope. You don't need to train hard. Even 20 minutes a day is pretty good. Not great, it's pretty good. If you do 30 minutes every day or 30 minutes every other day, that'd be great. If you're really out of shape, start slow. Train twice a week. Train twice a week, drink water, reduce your diet, which you take in if you're overweight by 10%, and uh, you'll be in a much better position in 30 days. Just 30 days, you're gonna feel much better. You're gonna think much better. You're gonna be able to code better. Trust me, it pays off in a big way. All right, that's it. 